we will go ahead and um, call our meeting to order at 916 is what I've got. Um, and has everybody had a chance to um, look over the um, minutes from the last meeting? Okay, so um, if there is um, no corrections that need to be made or placed, I need to have a motion that we can approve the minutes from the last meeting? I have corrections. You do, okay. What, what needs to be corrected? I think we need to include Connie as an attendee. Um, and then we do need to note that Karen Reed was not in attendance. Then in, uh, let's see, paragraphs 3D1, we need to, uh, last sentence, it states the mayor is the only person who can sign it. We really should um, put, make this proper. It's the city mayor, city and mayor are both capitalized. And then in old business, uh, so that's 4A3, the, the name Waddle and Dob, it's with two T's, not D's. So Waddle is W-A-T-T-L-E. Okay. Then in uh, part, part five uh, C, the, the 6,000 um, that the event generated, we need mm -hmm. to clarify that that was, um, the event generated $6,000 for a woman's work so that we don't have any confusion that that uh, was generated for the Calhoun House. And then lastly, if we can change my, correct the spelling of my last name in the, the adjourn moved by Karen Cruz, Cruz is K-R-U-S-E. Okay. All right, I'll make all those changes. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. I have yes. one, Karen. I have, I have one correction because I was not there at that meeting. I was That's what um, I thought. down in Texas. I thought you were online with us. Oh, I was no. not. I no, thought I was going to be able to, but my mother <laughs> had a doctor's appointment that morning. That's right. That's right. Yep. So that's my Thank correction. you, Connie. You're Appreciate welcome. it. And you. thank you, <laughs> thank you, Karen, for 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 those corrections. And so um, we cannot approve the minutes um, yes, until you can. Yeah, you can approve them as corrections. With corrections. Yeah. With corrections. Okay. Correct. Okay. So if I could get an motion on that level, please. <clears throat> we approve the minutes as corrected. Okay. Can I get a second, please? Second. I say so, oh, okay. Karen and Connie, that was a tie. <laughs> oh, go ahead, Connie, it's yours. <laughs> I'm here. So the minutes have been approved um, with corrections and um, moving on to the house manager's report. Kathy. Good morning. It is exciting to report that things are getting busy. Um, at least it feels busy compared to the last 15 months, right? Yes. Um, we had 14 events in May, um, four city events, uh, most of which were grant meetings, uh, five club meetings, a final walkthrough, and two revenue generating meetings and two tours. Um, the garden's been really busy with um, pictures, but again, we're having a hard time keeping track because it's uh, we're not always there. So. Um, in terms of inquiries, we're doing quite well. We had 34 in May, um, five by phone, um, 29 electronic. And uh, the email distribution, we got two that were just regular email. We got 10 from Wedding Wire, um, nine from the city of Longmont, six from The Knot, and two from Venue Hub. And we had almost 100 guests in May. So that's that to me is a very exciting after the house sitting empty for a year. Yeah. Um, we have lots of looky loos, but no new revenue generating events. Um, people are poking at doing events, but they're not booking yet. So it'll be interesting to see as people become more comfortable if we actually um, start to get some more bookings. I hope so. I'm expecting that to happen. Um, 
We had one catered event in May with 24 guests, which was a nice little wedding. And um, we had we have a total of 13 revenue events booked for 2021. Um, our annuals are installed. Come by and see the garden. It is bursting with flowers. Um, the peonies are, are lovely right now. Um, the, um, I was trying to think, the poppies are still blooming. Mm -hmm. The roses are starting. The annuals are all in. Um, and we got the fountain working um, yesterday. So we, oh. we are almost good to go. <laughs> good. Nice. Um, I, I've lost my, my spot. <laughs> um, the, the, the annuals, I'm, looking, I'm trying to look at the camera, but then I lose my spot on the paper. Um, the annuals are a lot smaller than usual. So if you walk through the garden, you'll notice that, <clears throat> that they're really itty bitty, but um, that's because all of the gray days that we've had, even mm -hmm. the greenhouses had trouble getting things to grow. Oh. So um, I think it's gonna take a little longer for the annuals to mature this year. Um, we did get a few substitutions, but we did receive most of what we ordered. Um, I think it's going to be really pretty. Um, Terra Care and Parks um, work together to start the fountain for the season. Um, it's been kind of interesting because uh, apparently Parks completely um, dismantled the pump underneath the fountain last year to drain it and then didn't put it back together. Oh, so, mm. so when we turned on the valve to fill the fountain, all we did was dump water in the pit mm. and um, make it like a waiting pool down there. So yeah. um, yesterday, Elisa and um, another person from Parks, another lady from Parks came and um, figured out what was wrong and put it all back together. And we actually dialed it in and it, it's working great. So the good news is we have a memorial on Friday and a wedding on Sunday, so we're 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 up and running. Yeah. Okay. And we learn a little bit more about the fountain every year. I can tell you, I don't want to fill it with a hose. If it's okay to top it off with a hose. You don't want to fill it with a hose, unless you've got all day. Um, Terra Care repaired our sprinklers, which had a major break just south of the house, and um, checked all the zones, and everything's working properly. So. Now that we have flowers, we also have water. So that's that's good news. Um, okay. Our events for June are listed. Um, we do have a very busy weekend. Um, this weekend, we're doing a memorial on Friday um, where we're providing the food and, uh, and the staffing. It's both a service and a reception. Um, we're doing a wedding rehearsal on Saturday and we're doing a wedding and a dinner on Sunday. Mm. <clears throat> All of our clubs are back except um, Longs Peak Questers and they'll be back um, in the fall. They don't meet during the summer. Um, we did have a lovely little wedding ceremony on the 22nd of May. Um, it was such a pleasure to actually do something again. And um, they had a really good time and then headed off to um, Flagstaff House for their dinner. So that went quite well. Um, we'll have a, an update on the grant. <clears throat> and apologize for my voice. We'll, we'll have an update on the grant later in the meeting, um, but we did receive approval from the State Historical Fund um, for our letter of intent to apply for the grant and got the link so we could start putting information in it um, uh, prior to the grant deadline. And um, we have to present it to council in July to get approval from council for the submission uh, because um, Brian Bagley, the mayor, is the only city official who has the authority to sign intergovernmental agreements. Um, Connie has joined Ann, Karen, and I for the final push to get everything ready. Thank you, Connie. And You're thank welcome. you, Karen and Ann. Um, we, we sent out, or we're sending out, There's, I think most of them are out, but there's one or two that haven't gone. Um, request to past and present club members, um, guests, and community members for letters of support mm -hmm. to attach to the grant application. Um, if anybody has any ideas about somebody we should send one to, um, please let one of us know and we'll get it out if we haven't already. Um, I've already got a few back. Um, we need to attach five to seven letters of support to the grant application. So we're trying to get a nice representation of the community to do, to do that with. 
Um, clubs are back. I already said that. Um, it really is a pleasure to have people back. We haven't had any event cancellations. Our um, new events booked um, under marketing. Venue Hub um, has announced that they're going to reinstate charges for their services. So we won't be getting leads from them anymore. I think it's pretty expensive um, compared to what we're really getting from them in terms of leads and responses. So we're not going to pursue that. Okay. Um, wedding sites and services, we had one um, lead list with 181 leads, um, got three opt-outs and 36 bounces. So their, their lists are about 80% good emails. <coughs> generally. Um, moving on to the financial information, you'll be happy to see um, on the um, actuals that were actually in the black. Um, and this is prior to me putting more money in the accounts in the last few days. <clears throat> so we're, we're actually in the black, which is I think really good news after last year. Um, we're up to 32 events with 175 guests for the year. And that's gonna start climbing uh, fairly rapidly now. Thank you, universe. Um, if you take a look at the actuals for May, you can see which clubs met and um, which events we did. Um, other than that, there isn't too much interesting information on there. Um, when you start to look at the expenses, the other thing we're gonna see as we move into doing more events is we're gonna have an increase, a corresponding increase in expenses. So you can see that we're starting to um, buy things for the garden, um, have rentals for the events. Um, the staffing numbers are gonna start to climb. Um, and uh, the last report is the financial report for Munis. So um, that's about all the information I've got. Any questions? Every time I look at the, at the screen, I figure out I'm like getting closer and closer to it. Any questions about the manager's report? Um, I did have a quick question. Um, we're still not counting um, the, um, ha have we heard anything more from Mary, um, Mary Ellen, I believe it is, about possibly doing QR code? Not yet, anything and it's more? Sue Ellen. Sue, oh, I'm sorry, Sue Ellen, of course. That's okay. It, it, mine I'll, send her a note. I'll send her a note to get an update. I, I'm not sure it will really help us count, but it might help us some. I, I think it's worth a, with a shot and with the QR codes, we can also then look at, if we get a QR code installed, we can also um, do other things like having it bounce to do a tour uh, you, you know, when somebody's there, that type of thing with the historic information. The QR codes give us a lot of other advantage, advantages in regards to, um, getting a count of people that are actually at the location. So that that's just my thought on that. Um, okay, moving right along with the um, agenda. So um, Kathy, or um, anybody else have any questions in regards to the manager's report? Okay. Um, all right, uh, moving on to old business, grant update and discussion. Karen's gonna take that. Yeah, I think that's me. Okay, so our update is that the letter of intent was approved without comment. So that's excellent because it shows that we're right on track with um, the content that's gonna be in the application. Um, the application, um, the portal was opened to us uh, at the approval of our letter of intent. Uh, that was the first of this month. And we have created, in essence, kind of a duplicate of the online application in a Google Doc so that we could um, put the information in the Google Doc, share it with one another, update it, and then as we're finalizing the content, then we transfer it into the, the portal, the online portal. 
Um, so, and as we have been adding into the online portal, it's saved. So it's in the status of save and continue with the work um, until we hit complete and submit. Um, at this point, our, our objective is to have each of you take a look at the Google Doc and provide us with any input or suggestions or comments um, by the close of the business date Friday. Uh, we would like to go ahead and um, pro provide this uh, draft application to um, History Colorado, the advisors there, uh, for a little bit of input. And we should be able to do that um, uh, by, by sometime next week. Um, but I think what's most important for you to know is we get one shot at advice from them. And so we want to be able to put together the most comprehensive, complete um, draft possible to submit to them for their um, advice. And then um, once that's done, then we can make any additions or corrections and, uh, and then provide it to Karen Roney by July 2nd so that she can ensure it goes uh, to city council for the meeting on July 13th. Uh, city council would need to approve um, going forward with it and approve um, uh, Brian Bagley signing it. And once we have that, then we can submit it timely um, by the August uh, deadline. So that's our time turnaround. Uh, that's our status. Um, the, um, I can email to you all the link to the Google Doc after our meeting. Um, and again, if that, this, is, this is the opportunity for you to, to look at uh, the application in, in, in this form, <laughs> and because mm -hmm. it's as complete as we could make it um, as what the online um, portal is. Uh, but this way, at least you can see um, prompts, you can see um, the, the writing narratives, um, so you can see what's going in here, and, and then attachments as well. There are uh, multiple attachments, required, recommended, and optional. We are including all. Um, we're being very comprehensive, so um, you'll be able to see all of that. Uh, so if that's not too much to ask, is that acceptable, ladies? Can you all look through this and, and give any kind of comment or support yeah. by, by close of business Friday? Certainly. Um, thanks very much, Karen and Connie and Anne and, and, and Kathy as well for everybody that's been working on the, the grant. I do apologize. Um, I'm working on my letter that I will be turning in j just probably um, either this afternoon or tomorrow, but I apologize for the past couple of months. Um, I've been dealing with um, an additional family member that's been in the hospital. So um, that's been exceedingly stressful. So, so I really feel like I've um, let you guys down on not um, giving us much support as I, I could or should in regards to this. So um, it's just one of those things. So thanks so, so much for all of you um, guys um, working on it. Um, again, I've got a, a, a letter of support that I'm turning in. I'm also getting one from my in-laws and um, I've got a couple of other um, community, past community members that um, have contacts to the home that are also going to be submitting. So um, I'm, I'm on, I'm working on that aspect. It's, it's, it's a drop in the bucket compared to all the other work that you guys have done, have done. So um, thank you so much. Um, any other comments? I, Karen, I have a question. Are, are we going to try and attach the attachments or are we just going to look at those at a later point? I can include I don't... attachments in PDF documents. Uh, I'm okay. not going to put them in the Google Doc. Yeah, we're still working on the attachments, just so you know. And they'll be um, that's mm -hmm. the last thing we're working on. Yeah, I, I, I did see that in when I spoke with with Anne and, and she sent me email, I, I saw that um, I believe the submit date was the 28th, but um, uh, that, that that the last thing, but I, I understand when it comes to 
you guys want to get this done <laughs> and have it all yeah. wrapped with a pretty bow and ready to go. Who, who's going to be presenting this to council? We don't know yet. <clears throat> TBD. One of us. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But just for clarification, um, the, the, the June 28th due date, that's just for letters of support. Everything else we've been gathering all along and collecting and um, putting together. So the, yeah. those letters of support will be kind of the last pieces that get placed into things. Um, but you'll see on the Google Doc um, the list of what is going to be included. And then I can um, provide PDFs of those documents that we currently have um, that um, you can take a look at. Thank you. I understand that, Karen. Again, um, thanks for the clarification for for anybody else. That so. Any other questions in regards to the grant update and discussion? I do, excuse me. I have some questions. Uh, this takes me way back to when this kind of all started, where um, our niece, who was the historical and historical figure in Colorado. She's the one that came to one of our open houses and said, you need to get a grant. You need mm -hmm. to apply for a grant. And at that time, she was no longer traveling the United States, naming the historical houses. They gave us two names to contact. Kathy knows, I don't even have those names right now, but they're in my folder. Have we had any contact with Emma about any of this since we started? Yes, um, we, we cool. have been um, conversing and meeting with Megan Eflin and yeah. Dan McCleave. Uh -huh. And um, they visited the house um, about a month ago and we sat down with them again. We had done a virtual call with them back in the, back in the what, January-ish. And, um, and then we visited with them in May so um, they are they are very involved, and that's who we're going to submit the re, the draft to for review. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great! So. I can't wait to tell our niece what she started here, and that you guys have taken over and really done well. Thank you, thank you, Janet. That's um, th yes, I agree. Thank you all for the hard work you've put into this. I have a question: Were there any guidelines sent out for these letters um, of support that I missed? There's a memo that is attached um, to the email that's being sent out to. We can send it to everybody. We'll we, go ahead would and you a memo. forward that out to all of you so you, you have it so that you too can forward it to anyone who you, you think it might be helpful to have a letter of support from. All right, Karen, you. are you going to do that or do you want me I to? Will. I will. Since okay. I'm doing sending the link and the attachments, I'll go ahead and send that out too. Thanks, Karen. Um, well, and we have um, picked a fairly broad representation of people. Mm -hmm. um, we've gone to some of our vendors. Um, we've gone to Centennial State Ballet. We've gone to Art Walk. We asked Santa to do a letter. Um, we've asked the mayor and the city manager to do a letter. Um, I think we asked Jeff Friesner for a letter. Um, so we, we have, and a number of uh, past board members, and what we're going to do is we're going to take the, a selection of the best letters and the best representation from the community because we probably won't be able to attach them all. Mm -hmm. so. And uh, Candy, I also have uh, sent a letter for, of, um, what do we call it? Support. Support. <laughs> um, to the St. Brain Historical Society, that was one of my areas. And then a couple of individuals too. So um, we're trying to cover all those bases of the people that are already involved in history. Of course, <laughs> in Great. And on that note, I think I'll ask each of you, if you uh, have someone in particular that you're thinking that you'd like to send this to, to request a letter of support, if you would share that with all of us uh, um, uh, board members, um, that will help us to, to avoid any duplicate um, efforts. Yes.
Okay. Um, I guess all discussion has been covered in regards to um, the grant. And moving right along, we'll just go on to the COVID update and mask and capacities. The good news is, and Ben can correct me if I'm wrong, um, most of the um, mask mandates and capacity requirements that would affect us have been lifted. Um, if they're vaccinated, they're, they don't have to wear a mask. Um, we are not asking if people are vaccinated. So, um, we, and we're back to pretty normal capacities, both inside and outside the house. Ben, do you have anything to add to that? Um, yeah, I mean, a couple, couple things. Um, well, I'll just tell you, I, I was thinking about this. If the amount of information I have processed over the last year concerning regulations, masks, and COVID, pretty sure I could have learned two languages if I spent that much effort. <laughs> yep. It's, uh, it's something else. But we are nearing the end. So the most recent was... Um, the state on the first came out with a new mask mandate that essentially put all facilities under that umbrella. Before that, it was they still had schools and hospitals and other than public transportation, which is a national thing, um, they are all underneath what Kathy had said, which if you're vaccinated, you do not need to wear a mask. If you're unvaccinated, it is um, recommended, but most places, including the city of Lama, are not asking. And that's just how, that's kind of how it is right now. Although you can require it. So you'll see a few places still that are requiring. I, I think, I know if you go to Kaiser, they're requiring it, for example. And that's fine, I think, for all of us. Um, there are no regulations outside with masking whatsoever. Those are gone. The other thing that changed on the first that was kind of important, um, not having to do with Callahan because we don't have a hundred capacity inside, was um, there was there was an odd hundred person plus having to know how many of those people were vaccinated. It was it was an odd regulation that really shouldn't have been included. Um, that really never came into play for us, thank goodness. Uh, and that one went away on the first. Um, so, so we're really down to there are no cleaning, distancing, you know, thick stuff like that. There are no regulations like that. We are down to just that mask regulation at this point. And we do expect Boulder County to, by tomorrow to issue something new. It's our hope that they just align exactly with the state because theirs is still a little, they still have some of those advanced things concerning schools which affects um affects our day camp for example but doesn't really affect calendar so so that's where we're at and we're kind of taking these final baby steps towards the end um, numbers are excellent if you look at illness numbers on boulder county data site uh, have the the graph lines have all come down to the very bottom at this point in the last few days you'll see two cases two cases four cases you know, it's an average of seven cases a day. So there's a little bit out there, but that that's virtually nothing compared to what we were dealing with even a month ago. So there's a kind of a COVID update. Um, and oh, and by the way, Boulder County is very well vaccinated. It's 75%, um, over 75% of eligible people have been vaccinated, at least one, I think 65%, over 65% both. And um, and of course, you have the 11 and under percentage that are, are not eligible yet. So that's where we sit. Anybody have any questions on it? Pretty much we're okay. <laughs> and if you're vaccinated, Yay. it's time to feel comfortable, that, in my opinion. There's not a lot out there, and that's that's wonderful. We are, we are reaching a society again, which makes me very happy being in recreation. <laughs> a new sense of normal. Yay. Yes. Yay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ben. All right. So that covers old business. Um, moving on to 
new business, I don't see any new business listed. So does anybody have anything new that they would like to add? Uh, I have point? one thing that I didn't, didn't list because I didn't think of it till after I posted everything. Um, we did have a discussion last month about perhaps not having a meeting in July or August. And mm -hmm. um, I wanted to see um, if there were any thoughts on that. I think the discussion point was that we should consider having the meetings simply to make them short, sweet, and to the point. Um, and because they weren't canceled sooner type of thing. I believe that's what was said. And we can, also we can cancel them still. So just so you know, well, I understand that. Um, it's just, um, I guess the next meeting would be right prior to us going before council with the, with, um, the grant in July. So, um, my recommendation is, is if we if we might cancel any meeting, it would be August. Um, it's at, the next meeting is actually the day after we go to council. Oops. So <laughs> yeah. that's okay because it gives us the opportunity to give the board an update on what the council meeting results were. Well, so, and next August next month we could meet in person. And yes, that will be great. Yay! <laughs> what? On, I'd suggest July because August, uh, September 11th, we have art walk, so that August would give sure. us the time face with everybody about art walk in which I want to throw out one little comment out there if anybody um, has an artist in mind um, can you contact me and we'll discuss it and we can only have a few you know we can't but if you could if you have somebody you'd like to invite uh, give me a holler send me a note or something and then we'll decide okay absolutely and and, and we should have we should have put Art Walk in, in, in um, old business so we could uh, we could discuss that. Th thank you very much, Ann, for, for including that information. Appreciate it. Um, so that being said, ladies, it's it's really up to um, what do we want to have a discussion on this and what everybody else's thoughts are? Do we cancel the meeting for July or um, and and thanks for the comment that, yeah, we don't want to not have the meeting in August because of Art Walk being right there, so. Well, I think that at this point, it's probably um, uh, justified to have both July and August meetings. That's my thoughts, but if there's anybody else that has a different argument, I'm... Any other comments, ladies? Nope, I'm good. Okay. And wow, the thought to be back in the house and be able to see everybody in person. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> that in itself is just oh, a sigh of relief. That would be uh, just amazing and amazing, um, particularly after this long stretch. So. Yeah. The, the only comment I have about the meetings is if you're not going to be able to attend, would you please let me know so I can make sure we have a quorum? Because if we don't have a quorum, then there's no point in meeting. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, when would the July meeting be? What date? It's the 14th. Okay. I'll have to check that one out. My daughter and granddaughter are coming and I don't know if we're going to be out of town or not, but I'll check that out. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, other business. Um, I think we kind of jumbled new business, other business, everything together. Um, uh, I don't see anything listed. Um, moving on to future agenda items. Does anybody else have a future agenda item that? Karen, Karen, you're muted. I think there's one that we probably should put on um, the future agenda. And the, um, that's just the planting of, well, the selection of perennials and um, what's going to be planted around the sign. Um, so we do have a planting plan, but we've since, um, determined that some of the plants might not be best 
because they would potentially cover the bottom of the sign, which we don't want to have happen. So I think having a, a quick um, portion of the agenda uh, it, for the future meeting, including uh, the planting plans that we can share that with everyone and um, get any input uh, and suggestions and feedback from anyone on the board with respect. Karen, what month are you looking at planting that in? Because usually you want to get it planted in the spring. I mean, I don't know how, if you're waiting till next year or are we going to do it in the fall or what's, what's the plan there? Probably September at this point. Yeah. I was thinking for some reason I had it in my mind. I was thinking that the planting would be in, in July or in August, but uh, is that wrong, Kathy? Because Well, we I just, I don't think planting them when they're, we're, when we're at the height of the, the heat they're, is a good idea. They're so shaking. now since we missed the May, June window, pretty much, I think September's the best solution. And not only that, they'll go on sale and we'll be able to get a good price on them. <laughs> All, all of the um, perennials that we planted last fall um, have have come back. So when, so when did we to purchase those? Um, because that was what I was going to do in the spring. And then we decided it was just too cold and too wet to do uh, any of the planting then. So uh, it was it's it. So it's still um, on my radar and my intention to to purchase those plants as a gift to the house. So um, just so you know. Well, thank you, Karen. That's that's amazing. I have and, a question. Uh, do you have grow? Uh, ask them sometimes about what to plant where, because just because I've been dealing with them in my rose gardens after the fence got torn up, uh, they're so helpful on telling what's going to grow higher or lower. Um, have you yes. talked to them about the sign? Yes, and yes. that's part of what we've we've part of our discussions is that we we put to put together a planting plan, um, and Kathy shared that with Grow, and they right. are the ones who said, okay, this looks like probably a not not a good option for right in front of the sign, and this is the reason why. Okay, so we are already okay. consulting with Grow, and and that that's yeah, we would not go forward without their expert. Opinion. Yeah, they're helpful. But, yeah, but we've also and, and a weighed in. Mm -hmm. so, and, but, we've, yeah. but we've also gotten the expert um, input from um, the flower bin here in town, uh, which obviously Billy Joe is, is very knowledgeable about um, the, the plants and um, suggestions. So, so we will continue that process of, okay, how about this? Yes or no? How about that? Yes or no? Will this all work and will it fit and, and how will it look? And so, yes. We continue to make sure we're we're addressing the questions to the experts before we move forward with saying, okay, board, here we are, and this is what's um, suggested. This is what's um, going to be appropriate or suggested to be appropriate. And what are your thoughts? And anyone have any other suggestions? So. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. So, Kathy, when exactly were the perennials planted last fall? Do you know? September, October. I, I'd have to okay. look at the notes. It, it, we tend to, to have a, um, a pretty good uh, September. September and October can be really beautiful months still. So um, if we if we can then, pr I agree, put the perennials, um, I mean the annuals, I don't know, the, the perennials. The, the, if we can have the plan, for one, I'd like to see the plan um, at the next meeting. So that would be great that we can show that. And then um, because I, I am relatively new to the house in, in regards to um, being under COVID, which is a, is a whole new thing. So, so do we have an overall plan for the garden that's, that's shared with, with the, with the, um, not per se, not per se. No. Okay. So this is just in regards because of the, the, of the, of the, how we got the sign up, correct? It's just because we need to plant around the sign. So okay. yeah, this planting plan, because it's new and, and it's very visual, the sign 
is its own separate little project. Okay, great. So um, Karen, if you could share that with us, and, and again, thank you for your generosity to donate those, those plants, that's, that's amazing. Um, all right, I guess that's under future agenda items, and if anybody else has anything else to add? Okay, and I guess we're moving right on to adjournment, um, and we're keeping our, our minutes down there, Kathy. So you should be happy. We're even starting late. Look at the time. So so we're we're doing we're moving along really quickly and doing great. So um, at this point, I just need somebody to make a motion for adjournment. I move we adjourn. Karen. <laughs> I second. Okay, everybody. I second that. <laughs> yes. Karen, I second. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, everyone. And again, I look forward to seeing you all in July.